Hey there, and welcome to lesson one, part two of the WordPress tutorial for beginners. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a quick walkthrough to connect your domain to your hosting. And so as you can see here, I'm already logged into my SiteGround account. And as previously mentioned, for the purposes of the various lessons, lectures, and tutorials, I'm recommending and using SiteGround. You don't have to use SiteGround, however, we're gonna be utilizing this as the example for these tutorials and what have you. The main thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that you connect your domain to the appropriate name servers. Now there's a number of ways to point your domain in order to display a website. The way we're gonna be doing this is with name servers. So the way you do this is by managing your DNS settings at your registrar, but first you have to also know what your DNS name server settings are for your website hosting. And as you can see, if you click on your My Account tab, if you have SiteGround and you scroll down, it gives you a bunch of information like the servers that I have set up. Um, this is cloud hosting for me. I'm assuming that you sign up on the $3.95 a month hosting plan and everything is pretty much taken care of for you once you establish your domain and what have you. But again, if you're not using SiteGround, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you connect your name servers appropriately. And so wherever your hosting company is at, find out what your name servers are, then go to your registrar. And at your registrar, what you're gonna to wanna to do is select manage your domain settings, DNS settings, and then you're going to go into your name servers and then you just plug in the appropriate name servers and then save it and then move on from there. Once you do that, the propagation period can take up to 48 hours, so it might not happen right away. Um, once the propagation period is over and all that has propagated and everything is good to go, I'm gonna assume at this point, you've already got all these resources lined out that we talked about in the previous videos. So now moving right along, once you have your name servers pointed appropriately, the propagation has taken place, you're gonna log back into your hosting account. You may have just a cPanel that's already set up for you, but if you don't, you're gonna to have to actually assign that domain to the hosting if you have the WHM. With SiteGround, you will have this, and so you just click on your WHM, and that's going to open up and load. And so what you're going to do is over here on the left-hand side, and all the WHM panels are pretty much the same, you're gonna go ahead and just create a new account. And the domain that I'm gonna be using is iWeber for this tutorial. And it'll automatically plug a username in there for you. You establish a password. I'll just quickly do this. And then your email address, and then moving along. So you're gonna put your domain information in here. And if your domain is uh, set up correctly with your DNS and what have you, it'll automatically give you the check mark here, okay? So you're gonna just leave the package blank. You're gonna leave the settings exactly the way they are. You're gonna continue to keep the enabled DKIM. And for me, I have private DNS, so I'm gonna use my private name servers. And then going down to your mail routing settings, you're gonna go ahead and click on here, automatically detect configuration, and then you're going to create that account. And so now what happens is, is that the account's created and a cPanel is also created for that domain name where you can then begin to build out your website by installing WordPress and you know doing a few other things we're gonna walk through here shortly. Now I'm gonna select list accounts. I'm gonna type in iWeber and I'm going to find that. And as you can see now, I have the cPanel button. I'm gonna click on the cPanel. And then I'm gonna X this out. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and set up an email address. Now with SiteGround, you get unlimited emails. So you can basically create like a contact at your domain name, a support at your domain name, an info at your domain name, and what have you. I'm just gonna use contact at iweber.com for now. This is the email address I'm gonna use for the admin. Select the unlimited package, create the account. Oh, passwords don't match, sorry about that. Okay, 
create the account. Oops. Change quota. Did I select? Yeah, I got unlimited. Okay, so now in order to put this email on your devices, whether it's a, an iPhone, an Android, a PC, or Mac, if you select this More tab here and you click on Configure Email Client, so you have iOS, iPad, iPod, and Mac Mail, and you have all the various versions here, Windows Mail, Windows Live, Microsoft Outlook. I'm using a Mac, so I'm just gonna tick on this here click proceed and it's going to instantly download a configuration executable file and now I'll click on that and I simply uh, continue to add this specific profile I type in the password for the email account I install it and as soon as that's done close this out as you can see now I'm going to go ahead and open up my Mac mail my mail client and oh, there's my son. And if I go down here, you can see that, oh wow, brand new email address set up. Contact at iWeber.com. So anyways, so, and you can do that as many times as you want, as many email addresses as you want. It's pretty cool. Now, moving right along, the next step we're gonna do is go ahead and go back to the home. And we are going to go to upgrade or make sure our PHP version is what we want and we're going to want to have the most current version of PHP because some of the things we use require that. And so the most recent version is 7.3.4. I'm gonna tick on that, I'm gonna save it. Now I'm gonna tick back to the home again. And now the very next thing I'm gonna do is put a SSL certificate on there. Now if you have hosting with SiteGround, they have free SSLs with Let's Encrypt. So I'll click on that and it looks like it automatically set it up for me already. So once you uh, get here, you're gonna wanna go ahead and select install if it's not already installed. And what the wildcard is, is if you have any subdomains that you create in the future, you can get a wildcard and it then puts the SSL on any of your subdomains as well. So. Once you have an active SSL, you're gonna select an action, you're gonna to go to HTTPS settings, you're gonna click on that, and you're going to enforce the HTTPS, and then you're gonna to want to rewrite external links. And so basically what this does is it makes sure that all your site content is completely secure. And click OK on that. And then once that's done, we're gonna go back to the home. And at this point, we're going to stop for this walkthrough because the next part, part three, we're going to actually install WordPress, install our themes, and then take a tour of the WordPress dashboard. So stay tuned because that's coming up next.